what are some other real life examples of how you're making estate plans smarter as life evolves? One of the things that I think that's been really unique and innovative is our capability in AI. Let's say there is a new client and they created a state plan when they were in Arkansas in the early 2000s. Instead of that advisor, which may not have the skill set to sift through and read through that document, that's a lot of hours spent and it's wasted. This technology basically reads that existing plan and then put it into a visualization report, a report that you can actually review with the client. If you have a client who comes in with an estate plan and they have something, but it's been 10 years, it's now a chance to kind of re-engage and see what has changed. Because as an advisor, what do you want to do? You want to add value. And what I love about the estate planning process and what Wealth.com has done is it uncovers opportunity after opportunity to help your clients and uncover where things have changed and evolved in their life. Okay, this is a first of its kind do business, do life interview, as you can tell by the microphone. But when you got to have a fun conversation at Future Proof, you make do, don't you? We rock and roll. We make it happen. <laughs> so shout out first off to RIA Database, RIA Channel, who let us borrow their setup. We also borrowed their mic. So hopefully the audio is coming through clear here. But for those unfamiliar, we have Tim White from wealth.com, who's got some exciting news they just announced yesterday. We have our one and only Sarah Baker of Triad Wealth here. So we're going to have a fun conversation just talking about wealth.com. But as we kick this off, you have some fun news. So let's just break it right here on Do Business, Do Life. Awesome. So yeah, really excited to be on the podcast. And I got to tell you, yeah, exciting news. So Monday morning, the media went out. Uh, We officially closed our Series A led by Google Ventures, known as GV, followed by City Ventures, Outpost, which is Duberger Berman, uh, Firebolt, and also 53 Station. So we have just incredible mix of investors. Couldn't be more excited um, and really excited to talk about it with you both today. So, yeah. Well, cool. I know um, Triad, thanks to Sarah, really, has been an early believer in Wealth.com, and you all have been working with us. So I'm going to kick it over to Sarah. And why don't you just explain for those not familiar with wealth.com, like what is wealth.com? Why should advisors out there be familiar with it and enjoy the mic? (laughs) I've been waiting to hold this since we started. (laughs) So yeah, so so wealth.com is an estate planning platform. Um, At Triad Wealth, we really believe in comprehensive planning and want to arm our advisors and our members with the absolute best planning tools um, and platform. And and I think estate planning is critical as part of the five worlds of of Triad and what we coach our advisors on. Legacy is one of those buckets. And when you talk to your clients about their legacy plans and and how they want to use capital, well, an estate plan, the actual docs and what you're doing to make sure that there's a trust and a will and all of those docs, like you, you have to actually execute and do that. But this is an area that I think advisors really struggle with because they're not lawyers. And so you think, well, how can I do this estate planning for my clients when I don't want to engage in the unauthorized practice of law? Um, I'm not an attorney. How can I do that? So it's really been a challenge. And it's also the one thing I think that advisors struggle talking to their clients about because it's a fairly morbid talk topic yeah. about what's going to happen after you pass. And I think wealth.com has done a phenomenal job of not just building the platform to be able to execute, but to educate, yeah. to educate. And I think that's what Triad is all about. So that was a natural partnership when we met wealth.com and started talking with them of how much education and support they provide to not just create great technology, but then how do you get adoption and educate advisors on it and then take it the next step of now, how do you talk to clients and, and get your clients to understand? So that's a little bit of the background of what wealth.com is and why we believe so much in it. Love it. Well, one of the things that that you grew up on the wealth management side. I grew up on the insurance side. The problem is still the same because I I really think when you look at a financial advisor building a true holistic financial plan, there's really three different worlds that converge. There's the CPA world, taxes. There's the attorney world, estate planning. And then there's the actual financial advisor world, which is the financial plan. And Tim, I, I remember you shared a bit with me. You were fortunate enough to have a nice exit in a prior life. Yes, yep. And I think that was one of the kind of the genesis ideas of wealth.com was actually kind of scratching your own itch when it came to, hey, we're 
don't really feel like there's a great solution in the marketplace. So do you mind sharing a bit of that story? Absolutely. I love to share this story and, and I absolutely love our partnership. Um, yeah. So, I mean, our story started really, we, we created a fintech in 2008. Um, and it was, uh, basically selling into large financial institutions, account onboarding, using AI machine learning, work with like massive institutions, think like Citibank, Bank of America, American Express. We ended up running a process around 2019 and we uh, sold the company for $500 million uh, to LexisNexis. And uh, it was a great exit. Um, it impacted an entire company. Um, but it was through that liquidity event. You know, asset complexion changed and life changed. And it was actually through our experience uh, with our financial advisors that we realized, and I say we, um, but Raphael, CEO, and our executive chairman, Ray Carvalho, that uh, there's a massive gap and there's an opportunity here. And so really since day one, 2019, we had a vision document before we had the domain wealth.com. We had the vision document said wealth.com. Now, funny enough, um, there is an article in the Wall Street Journal 2009 that said, who's going to buy wealth.com? And so here we are today. But it's been absolutely an exciting journey. I think we have an incredible team. And uh, the one thing that makes us really unique in this space is that you know, we have a technology background and this is, this is a technology company. And so I think that's really what attracted, uh, Google Ventures and GV when they looked at the other players and said, look at, there's one horse that is re, you know, really, um, ahead of the others. And, and let's, let's be a part of that story. Um, one other thing to double clicking, cause I think like the need is massive and, I, and you both seen it. Um, but we're, we're seeing amazing trends right now, you know, over the next two decades, Half of all assets are changing hands. And so estate planning is now front and center and all the conversations and all these breakout sessions. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And it's fun to be here at Future Proof and it was perfect timing and super excited to align with being on do business, do life with you guys. So, well, I feel like we're doing business, doing life right now. This conference is, is literally a great representation of that. Um, so let's go back, Sarah, in your prior life, you were leading a, advanced planning team uh, with Edelman. And what, like, if we look at the, from the advisor perspective, the, in the simplest way, what wealth.com solves, what were the gaps when it came to actually diving into a financial plan and addressing the estate planning? Like, like simplest way to describe, like, here's what wealth.com does. Yeah. So essentially what wealth.com will do is it will capture your clients needs, wants, and wishes of what's going to happen to their assets and the capital that they've been accumulating that they now have if something happens to them. And so it really kind of follows that journey and that experience of, of like, what assets do you have? Let's go through your, your actual life, but it's saying, here's where everything is going to go and what I want to happen because things do happen. And you don't, it, it's the same reason why you have insurance. It's like, well, if something happens, you're going to plan for the best, but prepare for the worst. Um, and so wealth.com is a really intuitive experience where the client is filling it out. And the client does have to fill it out, right? Because otherwise, if an advisor is filling out the docs, well, now you're crossing the line. And now you are going into unauthorized practice of law. But if the client is actually inputting it and you have the advisor, or it could be someone on your team who is your director of estate planning or or a client service specialist who you've trained to really educate the client and guide them through the questions so that they understand and what in that experience, I think what wealth.com has done really, really um, a great job of is if you see a term you don't know, you can just expand it. Mm. And now you can understand what it means. And it's in very simple language because lawyers and I'm a lawyer, so I am guilty of it is we like to use big words. We like to, we think we get more credit by using a hundred words instead of 10 words. Uh, like, have you seen well, you legal can, dogs? You can, you can bill <laughs> hourly. If you use more words, it's easier, right? So it's like, we like words. We like lots of words. Um, but wealth.com is simple. Did all, you know, just condensed it down into, um, you can, uh, someone who, isn't in it every single day can actually understand, okay, this is what it actually means for a, what is the trustee? What is a successor trustee? Most people don't know, or they, they, they might know, but mm. you, you're going through that experience and filling this out. And so it breaks it down. So it allows the advisor to build that doc and also get to know their client better, especially what I, one thing I, my, what I actually love about it is if you have a client who comes in with an estate plan, and they have something, but it's been 10 years, it's now a chance to kind of re-engage and see what has changed. Because as an advisor, what do you want to do? You want to add value. 
Yeah. You want to add value and, and you want to demonstrate expertise and credibility and you can uncover things that, okay, well, these things have changed in your life. And this is what I read your other, your existing doc. Well, is that person still alive? Like, and now you're helping them. Yeah. And so I think most advisors have a heart of serving and helping. Mm-hmm. And what I love about the estate planning process and what wealth.com has done is it uncovers opportunity after opportunity to help your clients. Mm-hmm. And uncover where things have changed and evolved in their life. So that was long winded as a true attorney form. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, I think at the end of the day, you just hit it. It's t- to do your best job as a financial advisor. It's, it's a servant mindset, it's servant's heart to, to truly serve your clients in front of you. I'm curious to get your take, Tim, on you mentioned AI and, and your mm-hmm. first venture. And I'm sure that plays heavily into wealth.com as well. How, how hard was the problem to solve when it comes to, hey, this client, you know, when they met with the advisor, they were in Ohio and now they've relocated mm-hmm. to Florida and there's dur- different laws, estate planning laws in each state. Mm-hmm. So how complex was that problem and how much of that has been human mm-hmm. built and how much of it has been technology built to solve that problem for advisors out there? Well, look at, I think that's a fantastic question and it is what makes us really unique here at wealth.com. I mean, we are absolutely technology focused and, you know, when we sold the previous business, it was a non-competing business. We brought a lot of that A player talent over. So we think about our engineering and our, and our, you know, DNA to be able to do machine learning and AI. Um, but we, we really thought about like the, this ecosystem, especially in the vision document is like we wanted to create a living and breathing ecosystem to really power the conversation with the advisor, but ultimately as well with the client. And so even how we even packaged the product and how we went to market and how we actually sell the product, it's not a creation one and done solution. It's a living and breathing ecosystem. To your point, Brad, I think, you know, what we've done is through strategic partnerships, we're getting feeds. And so through those feeds, we actually see through an MLS ping if somebody sold their property. And our documents are absolutely not only state specific, but they're optimized for the state. And so case in point, if somebody sells their property in New York, we'll notify the advisor and they'll go ahead and reach out to that client and say, have you sold that property? Have you moved states? Yes, you have. So let's go ahead and Floridize, Floridize those New York documents. So, you know, Sarah, to your experience, you know, that's a really costly thing for somebody to go through. You have to source that different attorney, right? They got to go through all that, that, that friction. And then to be able to actually get that Florida document because their attorney was only barred, let's say in New York. And so we're breaking those barriers, which is really exciting, but we're not just limited to that. We're just thinking about intelligence in such a fresh and new way. And I think the one thing like, for Google, that means a lot to us is they have an incredible proven track record of working with founders with big ideas to make generational companies. Yeah. And that's really our mission here. Um, there's just so much that we can do in estate planning, which is a really exciting. So, so what just came to mind there, Tim, I look at the old school financial plans when I first got into the business, that it was the three ring binder. Yeah. Print out this 74 page docs, which is not too different than an estate plan. Yeah. So it seems what you're really doing. If I look at financial planning softwares like eMoney or uh, Money Guide Pro, they digitized something that was a traditional like paper financial plan. I had no clue that you guys are actually with wealth.com plugging in these feeds. So it's like you're digitizing an estate plan to make it smart. Yes. So as life changes, as things evolve, now it's like not, okay, let's dust off the, like, honestly, I think about my estate plan that's probably 10 years old sitting. Sarah, you got to help me out with this. What's going on here? <laughs> Let's hook, let's hey, hook, 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 hook a brother up here. Yeah, let's so, um, so basically you're just digitizing and now it's like live feeds mm-hmm. into this estate planning doc that as life changes, your estate planning's evolving with you. Is that absolutely, fair? Absolutely. You nailed it. You nailed what, it. what other, what are some other real life examples of how you're making estate plans smarter as life evolves? I think I, well, well, first of all, we need to get you set up with, you know, a, 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 we need to get a restatement right away. Um, you know, one of the things that I think that's been really unique and innovative is our capability in AI. And so for us, like, for example, let's say there is a new client and they created a state plan when they were in Arkansas in the early 2000s. Instead of that advisor, which may not have the skill set 
to sift through and read through that document, that's a lot of hours spent and it's wasted. And so we have come up with a technology called Esther, which we just want a wealthy in New York for, by the way, a little bit of hardware. We're excited to return from NYC with a little bit of hardware. Uh, keep the momentum going with the funding round. But um, this technology basically reads that existing plan. You know, again, these are attorneys with their own linguistic tendencies, right? So it's not an easy thing to do. It's not like reading a tax form, but able to extract that data and then put it into a, visual, a visualization report, a report that you can actually review with the client. And then you can review your plan, Brad, and say, it is time for a restatement. You move states. Beneficiaries have changed. Let's get you access to wealth.com and get you set up with that restatement. Um, one other area that we're really, I think, pushing the boundaries and, and really going after new frontiers is that when we look at advisors today, their book of business is not homogenous, right? They're working with the richest person in town and also the neighbor. And so some, you know, when you think about some of these ultra high net worth families, they're going to need more complex estate planning that we know are guardrails, right? But where do we service them is actually being able to take that very complex estate plan instead of taking hours to make visualization reports You know, talking about the distribution of assets, talking about scenario planning, things of that nature. We do it all through now our ultra high net worth suite of solutions called the family office suite. And so when I go back and I talk about city venture, you know, we'll be working with city not only for their city goal, but also their city private client. And so we actually can work with clients across the wealth spectrum. So the richest person in town and their neighbor. And we also can work with the kids, the client too. So be able to break through that barrier into that next gen relationship. That's the power of technology and estate planning. But some people say like, oh, are you disrupting the world? Are you disrupting do attorneys not like you? Let's just be honest with ourselves. 60% of our population today in the US do not have estate planning. Wow. And think about the 40% that need to, need to do a restatement, yeah. right? It's kind of like healthcare today. We don't have enough teachers. We don't have enough nurses. We do not have enough trust in the state attorneys to adequately address these issues and concerns. And that's where technology can actually partner with attorneys. And so here at wealth.com, it's not only that we have the most incredible best in class attorneys that are on staff. We also have a partnering network of attorneys across every state, including DC. So if things get a little bit hairy or they want to do something more complex, we will be able to facilitate that to our attorney network. So it's about marrying great people and great technology. I say that is the secret sauce for any technology vendor here at Future Proof. They want to know if they want a series A like wealth.com, follow that formula. Yeah. I love that. So let's, let's get into that a little bit. And I want to go to you, Sarah. Um, you were, first off, an attorney by trade. So I think you can speak to this pretty well. Secondly, you were leading an advanced planning team at one of the largest RIAs in the country. As you looked at, let's call it, you know, the less investable assets, the more simplistic estate plans. And as you were scaling to the multi, multi multi-million dollar client, what, what were the differences you saw from an estate planning side that just flat out weren't being addressed properly as as the net worth grew. Yeah. So I, what I think was consistent about was not being addressed was the visualization. Yes. And I think that's really important and it doesn't matter if you have 100k in assets or 10 10 million in assets. Um there has not been technology and it's had to be really manual where every advisor does it a little bit different of how do I actually take the client's financial life and actually draw out the I call it I call it the estate diagram. Uh, right? Where you're saying, "Well, you have an IRA and you have a 401k and like and it's like, well, now who's the successor trustee and the trustee and just drawing out what is called the estate diagram. Um, and, and that was very consistent of like no clients were getting that. And if they were, the advisor had to manually do it. Um, and then in my prior life, we had attorneys on staff. They could not provide legal advice because we were not a law firm. Yeah. So that's kind of that line of you can't provide legal advice if you're not a law firm engaging uh, authorized practice in the um, in the practice of law, but you can give legal education. Yeah. So you can talk about the estate diagram. You can talk about the facts. Um, cause I have heard objections of, um, advisors saying, well, I don't ask for estate docs because I can't give legal advice. And so I don't want to, I, I, I'm, I don't want to cross that. I don't want to talk about them. And it's like, that's a misnomer. That's a myth. That's head trash. You should ask for the estate docs. 
um, if you can't read them, have someone in your office who can or train them to, because that just has facts. And talking to a client about the facts of what the documents say is not the practice of law. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're making suggestions and stuff like now you're 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 stepping outside the line, but saying, hey, I recommend and I think we should look at a slat. I think we should talk, think about an eyelet makes sense for you. I, I think, you know, a crut or a crat, all these things make sense. And that's where higher AUM clients need that. They need to know the levers to pull of, I don't need a revocable living trust right now that doesn't have like a springing, you know, sub trust that's going to create, you know, a decedent's trust. Like we need something more. Now you're blending in the intersection of estate planning and tax planning and, and you're more complex clients, the higher you start talking about those types of things instead of the lower AUM clients, you do just probably need the revocable living trust with maybe a decedent's trust or, you know, a spousal trust, some type of sub trust underneath it that would spring into existence upon death. Yeah. That's more simple. And that's what wealth.com, right, does really well is the simple, but it can, because of the estate diagram that it can create, now you're solving every client problem that needs to be there, but you can say, well, I actually recommend and think you need something else because we have to solve taxes mm -hmm. because you're going to have that tax bill. Do you, who wants to pay taxes? You or your decedents, you or your surviving spouse. And so now we can start talking about, does a slap make sense? Does an islet make sense? Does all of this stuff make sense? Um, and you can now trigger that conversation where if you've got a CIO who you're working with, who's an attorney, this is an easy sell for you to, to, to say why you're using wealth.com. I have this estate diagram. I can see everything. We're doing some tax planning. I'm still pulling you and I'm sending you all those clients. If you don't, great. Wealth.com has the network. Yep. There you go. Yeah. They've got, they've got the referral. So either way you're covered and you don't have to worry about your CIOs, in my opinion, right? Being turned off or concerned because you just have to send them all the things they like to do anyways. They want to do the slats. Exactly. They want to do yeah. those. They they don't want to do like, no, like the, yeah. the very basic, like templatized, not complex estate plan because technology can do it. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> we got a lot of lawyer acronyms there, which actually, <laughs> actually, you know, here's what's cool though. I say that a little tongue in cheek, but that's what's required. I mean, you have to know all that complex yeah. law you to do. do this right. And I heard it said a long time ago in business, those that do best in business are the ones that simplify the complex. Mm -hmm. So really what I'm getting here, just like for 20 years, I've seen the best financial advisors in the world take really complex financial planning and whiteboard it and diagram it. So it's simple. It sounds like really that's what the software is doing, mm -hmm. taking really complex estate plans with you know, I'm thinking like flow charts with all these branches coming off yeah. and now you're just visualizing it mm -hmm. so that a, a, a retiree or somebody that needs estate planning can just sit there and be like, oh, that makes sense. I get it. Absolutely. So let's let's go back to the attorney question, because I think of like two schools of advisors here. I think of here's this seasoned advisor that's got their go to estate planning attorney that's either like a good friend where it's kind of a referral relationship or maybe some yes. the higher end might even have somebody in house. Right. And then you might have maybe the younger generation that maybe they'd really have no relationships in place. So, Tim, how would you talk through kind of option A? I've already got like a really good estate planning solution as far as a human. Mm -hmm. And option B is I don't have anyone. How would wealth.com serve both of those two groups? I, I think that a uh, fantastic question. Um, option A, I mean, you'll be surprised of how many large firms we work with with a centralized team. We call it really the hub and spoke model that we partner with because their attorneys are limited. They're only one, they have capacity issues. As their firm starts to grow, they're gonna start to feel that bottleneck. In addition to that, they're only barred in certain states. And so we allow them really to supercharge things. And it's been absolutely an incredible success. And how we kind of price our and package, we have a hub and spoke model that can really complement, make sure the economics, but imagine, a large firm, the cost of a paralegal incorporating wealth.com. It's pretty amazing, right? That ROI is crystal clear. I think with the uh, younger advisor, you know, that is part of the challenge, right? How do I get a trusted network of attorneys? Not only like one attorney in my state, that one, like this whole idea, I, and I've talked to so many advisors, there is not a reciprocal referral yeah. program in place. The referral goes out, it goes into what my son, he's 10 years old, loves space and NASA, but it's a black hole. 
right? It's just a black hole and that lead never comes back. Now, maybe in a multiverse, it does somewhere. I'm just kidding. Now, you, how do you say hey, we're, there's we're a lot of Marvel in your... Right yeah, we're going... Mar how do you say you have a lot of Marvel in your life without saying you have a lot of Marvel if you don't bring in the multiverse? But that is the beauty of Wealth.com is day one, they get access to this technology, the power of our team, our human touch, in addition to that, the power of our network. So now if their clients are spread across the US, and especially these younger advisors... You know, it's not brick and mortar. They're working with clients in Texas and California and New York. So they're facing a lot of challenges. So this is, this is the solution for them. And we get that feedback constantly, which is really exciting. I will say this though, on these beautiful visualizations, you talk about these complex, you know, hundred million dollar estates. You know, it is through some of those integrations. We talked about that one partnership we have, but you know, we integrate with Adapar. We integrate with Black Diamond. We integrate with Orion. I mean, we're really, really focused on making it the most seamless experience, whether it's the major CRMs, proprietary systems, some of our larger firms. We want to make those connections because we want it to make it the best, 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 best experience for everyone. And it is kind of a little bit self-serving because it just builds a stickier experience for us at wealth.com as well. So we like to commit resources to, to make those, those connections. Love it. Um, so one thing that I just picked up on there and I, I look at the world of finance pre COVID post COVID and, and it was already kind of, there was a trend of, Hey, a lot of advisors, I want to work remote, right? I want to be able to like do appointments via zoom and, yeah. COVID just blew that door wide open. And so another thing I'm picking up that wealth.com would allow is you now have estate planning options as any financial advisor that's engaging wealth.com in all 50 states. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? That's 100%. So, so, so I've got, let's just look at Triad. We're based out of Lawrence, Kansas. Mm -hmm. So we might have an estate planning attorney that can operate in probably Kansas and Missouri is probably pretty common in our, our neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. But now with Wealth.com and the other 48 states, we would have your network that we yes. could lean on and your software that helps facilitate those conversations. 100%. And one, one additional point to that, Brad, we do work with our partners. And so if you do have a value add trusted relationship with a local attorney, when you sign up to Wealth.com, you're going to be assigned a partner success person within our team. And we are going to go ahead and curate that. And so if there is a step up that is needed, let's say, for example, we don't do trust for children with special needs, right? And so in this case, you know, if that person's in Kansas and you want to refer it out, that trusted attorney in Kansas, we help facilitate that. It's a kit glove experience. It's a wonderful handoff. And so we complement those existing strategies. Yeah. Okay. Loaded question. Maybe I throw this to you, Sarah, since you're the only attorney on this panel, as far as I know. Um, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm just thinking, unfortunately, legal docs are somewhat dependent on the caliber of attorney you're dealing with. Yeah. So as you look at wealth.com and kind of the caliber of docs from, let's just say an attorney that doesn't do a great job to a best in class legal doc, what have you seen as far as because software can iterate and get better, yeah. you know, as as it evolves? What what have you seen there just looking straight through an attorney's lens when it comes to the docs? So I'm actually really glad you asked about this because this was really important when we were doing due diligence on what's the right solution, because quality of docs was there were two things I was looking for. Um, I was looking for high service client experience. Number one, that's always, that trumps everything in this space is client experience and service and relationship, but then quality um, and quality of docs. Because I do think that this is my just perspective, um, that there are a lot of, it's easy after law school to go hang up a shingle. And a lot, a lot of attorneys do hang up a shingle. I'm, I'm an estate planning attorney now and you're not trained. And if you haven't been in a mid-size firm, a national firm, then you can do some basic estate planning, but you don't get the training. And law school did not train me to be a lawyer. Law school taught me how to read mm -hmm. and understand cases and connect dots. And it's, it taught me how to think, but it didn't actually teach me how to be a lawyer and you have to be trained. And so I, I have definitely seen, and I think every advisor out there, I guarantee if they've ever looked at a state docs, they've seen how different they all are. That varies very much by attorney and the quality is an issue. 
there's some stuff I read where I'm like, oh, how did this, like, what? They, they didn't even proofread this. Graduate? Yeah. No, I am like, they passed the bar. Yeah. Uh, where did they find this? And I like, guess just in bad quality and quality of advice is very important and it matters for financial advisors. And you know, when you are talking with an advisor that's highly competent, yeah. it co- shows in the conversation and the questions. And same with an attorney, a state, an estate planning attorney, the quality of docs. Um, I read, you know, front to end wealth.com's docs. Because I cared very deeply about the quality of the documents and compared them to other documents and just what I've seen. And I mean, Ann Rhodes is, pro- I mean, you know, I'm like a major groupie um, for, for Ann Rhodes is brilliant and she's got the training. And that's I look for that of like for where I was not familiar with Ann a little bit of her background. Yeah. So so well, maybe Tim, Tim will share a little bit more. I'll tell him that. But but like. You do want, if you are trying to scale and build what wealth.com is, you need an att- attorneys to build the docs who've seen a lot and have really got the experience, um, to, to draft those docs because it's complex and it, a, a template won't work. So share, share about Ann because she's amazing. Um- one what one hundred percent Ann Rhodes, you're a fan. I'm a massive Uber fan of Ann. Um what a an amazing person, a part of our C level team. She leads um our legal team, our legal strategy. She crafted the strategy around our documents and uh her background's absolutely incredible. I mean, if you know all the top firms, when you say like the names of McDermott, Will and Emery or Burke and Cooey, like these are top law firms. Um she's an absolute badass. Um, and when she's on the call with clients, with partners, she is probably one of the best connectors, best communicators. Um, and if I'm just going to go a little bit further and, and shouting out Anne, she speaks four languages. She's a concert pianist. She's a mother of two. She's a gamer. Okay. Like a, a gamer? A gamer as well. And, and I, and I just think the world of her. And every time I wake up at 4.30 a.m., because I wake up early and I get my day started, I don't know where she gets the hours. I have no idea, but she's absolutely incredible. And we're so blessed to have her and such an amazing thought leader. Um, right now, um, she's on maternity leave. So shout out uh, to her little baby girl that's entered the world. And uh, she's absolutely wonderful. We can't wait for her to return. And yeah. That's awesome. Um respect obviously mom but i'll tell you what the gaming's right up there uh that's that's impressive what do you know what game she plays uh, uh, I, so it's a shooter right it's a shooter game and um she's so kind like and, and she's like it's not overly violent um and like I, i'm part of a group and like i could help like you know Give a tutorial, potentially train William if he's interested, my 10 year old. I'm just like the coolest person on earth. Um, yeah, it's called Call of Duty. No, just kidding around. I'm just joking around. She's so nice, but takes all of her stress just shooting people. But no, no, it is not Call of Duty. But yeah, she's absolutely incredible. She's out there just destroying kids on Fortnite, right? Um, well, so I know we've got a lot going on around us. So we'll, we'll, uh, kind of wrap this here pretty soon, but. Can I give one shout out? Yeah, yeah, one please. So we are a growing company and we are growing. Um, if you know me, you know the wealth.com brand. I have, you know, really, I don't want to age myself. I always like to use this 80s movie, but Tango and Cash, do you remember Stallone and Kurt Russell? All right. So I'm Kurt Russell. Stallone is Danny Lorfink in this mix. And so he's my partner in crime. He's our chief product officer, also a co-founder. And uh, he's in New Jersey having the worst case of FOMO. But his, but his wife is expecting a little boy. So anytime now, he'll have his son, Jackson. But uh, he wishes he could be here. I wish he could be here. So shout out to Danny. And when this probably airs. Hi, Jackson. <laughs> well, I just want to say... I was I was uh, reminiscing. It was literally last year at this exact event that Sarah introduced us. Yes. And I'll tell you what was cool because, you know, a lot of the wealth.com stuff has lived on the wealth side of triad. Mm-hmm. And Sean and I grew up in insurance. And then it's been really awesome adding Sarah to the team. And obviously, you've interacted a ton with the wealth team. And, and no different than your team, we're trying to just add rock star talent on the team and then just go do some big things and change an industry. And what I loved the first time we met 
is just your infectious personality. I think you gave me some custom shoes. <laughs> and I was like, man, like he's DBDL already. And I remember telling Sarah that. So, Tim, it's been just awesome to see you guys grow. Congrats on and the new round. Story yeah. About this great uh oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, now, now all the truth is finally coming out. We're hitting our stride here. Another great story. So, I live in Scottsdale. So thank you for the shout out. I see the Saguaro cactuses on your shirt. I'm assuming that's extremely intentional. Um, by the way, they are native to the Sonoran Desert. So it is actually Phoenix and Arizona. Um, but, uh, Sarah was in Scottsdale. It was last winter and you were in Scottsdale inviting me to an event. Okay. So I arrive at the event a little bit late. It was an experience. It was absolutely 100% an experience. So I walk into the event and the gal that's running the desk said, and I hear all this clapping in the other room, cheers going off. And, and then the doors open and she goes, Oh, if you want to autograph with Peyton Manning. Yes. I said, Peyton Manning stand over there. And I got to tell you, I am not starstruck. Never. I'm like, yeah, uh, whatever. You know, where's, yeah, I'll, I'll go over here. Right. I ran to the line. I'm like, that's how you guys do it. So, you know, no joke. Um, so kudos to the team. You guys have such a great culture. We're so excited to be partnered with you. Well, I appreciate it, Tim. We like to have fun too. You know, it's, it's fun to bring fun people out and have a good time. So, so I have a question. Is yeah. Peyton, does Peyton work out of the Lawrence office? Is that how it is? <laughs> Peyton does not currently, not currently, but we, we could probably find a spot on the team for him. He's a decent leader. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You, need, you need junior advisors kind of train them up. So yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Sarah, do you have any parting thoughts as we wrap here? This has just been so much fun. Other than so other than this, the, mic, this yeah, is the, this is next level. The, if, if only our viewers knew the lead up that brought us to this amazing setup. Yeah, um, shout out to our <laughs> yeah. channel and to Triangle Network. Uh, they they came through for us big time to make this happen. So this has been a blast. All right, y'all. Well, it's been awesome doing some business, doing some life. Excited for the rest of our time here together at Future Proof. Till next time. Till next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode on to this week's featured review. It comes to us from iTunes user JTLEO06. They say new to show five stars. New to show just a few episodes in, but great guests in the industry and from outside of the industry, another great resource to work on the business. Well, thank you JTLEO06 uh, for taking the time to leave the review. And, you know, it's interesting the format of this more recent show, Do Business, Do Life, um, my previous show was interview style every single one. And I loved the eclectic mix as long as it was a conversation that could serve you advisors out there, whether on the business front, the life front, somewhere in between. Uh, as long as I could check that box, it was like, yes, let's move forward with this guest and try to distill their wisdom for you all. And we've kind of mixed that up with triad member spotlights, where we're taking actual real life triad members, kind of giving you before and after success stories. So that's been fun to weave in. And then actually Dave Zoller uh, shared like, hey, Brad, you should do some solo episodes, just coaching on some of the common uh, gaps or problems you see in our industry and frameworks that you help solve them. So this one's, uh, this, this iteration of the show, chapter two on the show We've kind of opened it up a bit more with different variation on the episodes, but seems to be checking the box. But if you you out there are listening in and you have other ideas or concepts, we've we've played around with the idea of ask me anything and taking some some listener questions. Please go out to uh, our social accounts, DBDL podcast, or my uh, personal accounts. Twitter is probably the one I'm most active on as far as just conversationally at Brad underscore Johnson. If you've got some thoughts for future shows, guests, uh, things that could serve you all out there, please uh, share those with us. And with that, we'll catch you all on the next episode. Take care.